Hello my dear students I hope everyone is doing well I know it's quite difficult and challenging as well because we are not connected physically but as we all know that nothing is impossible as the word impossible itself says I am possible I welcome you all once again to our third video today we will start chapter 2 name of the chapter is memory and storage this is my uh, third video and from chapter 1 this is part 1 let's start the second chapter okay let's start this chapter name of the chapter is memory and storage first see the topics In this video we will discuss on these topics first one is data and information second memory unit third memory size fourth types of memory fifth ram and rom now let's start what is data and information okay data and information what is data it comes in your mind what is data yes data is what set of characters like what are characters characters are digits alphabets or special characters that represents facts or figures is known as data listen characters like digits digits means numbers 1 2 3 4 alphabets means a b c d special characters means the special character which you are using comma ampersand sign dollar sign full stop all these are called special characters okay these are called data now what is information information when this data means whatever the data you are giving is processed by the processing unit okay and which is the processing unit we have discussed in chapter 1 yes cpu cpu is the processing unit is known as information whatever the data you are giving okay those data are processed by cpu and after processing the result comes and that is called information got it next for example for example see a student's subject marks are called data while his percentage of marks grade and position are called information second example students name in a class are called data while names of students are in alphabetical order are called information got it understood what is data and information with the example come to the next point that is memory unit what is memory unit okay first of all what is coming in your mind what is memory so a memory is just like a human brain see it works just like a human brain it is used to store data and instructions whatever the data and instructions you we are giving memory is storing all these things it is storage space in the computer that is called memory now bit what is a bit bit is binary digit a bit is a binary digit the smallest data in a computer bit is the very smallest data in a computer okay and a bit can hold just a zero or one zero or one are called binary digits zero means what zero means off state one means on state means zero means negative and one means positive got it byte what is byte the amount of data and instructions that can be stored in a computer memory is measured in bytes whatever the data and instructions we are giving to the computer computer is processing and it is processing it is taking those data converting into machine language by converting it into bytes understood 
a byte is consists of 8 bit, bits means one byte is equal to 8 bits okay now next topic is memory size this memory size chart is given in your book okay you can see from there see 8 bits is holding 1 byte 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte 1024 kilobyte that is KB is equal to 1 megabyte 1 MB 1024 MB is equal to 1 GB that is 1 gigabyte 1024 GB is equal to 1 TB that is 1 terabyte 1024 TB is equal to 1 PB that is 1 petabyte 1024 PB is equal to 1 EB that is 1 exabyte 1024 EB is equal to 1 zettabyte 1 ZB 1024 ZB is equal to 1 yotta byte that is 1 YB you have to learn all these memory sizes nicely next topic is types of memory yes there are two types of memory primary memory and secondary memory primary memory is also called internal memory and secondary memory is also called external memory now in primary memory two examples are there RAM and ROM in secondary memory see three examples are there hard disk CD DVD blu-ray disk flash disk these are the name of the storage devices okay so these are memory two memories are there two types of memories are there primary memory and secondary memory okay what is primary and what is secondary memory primary memory or internal memory don't forget okay primary memory is also called internal memory or main memory it is built-in memory designed to store data and instructions while the computer isn't working very important it is built-in memory designed to store data and instructions while the computer is in working secondary memory that is also called external memory it is used to store the information for a longer period okay two types of periods are there short term and long term short term means whatever you are keeping the data for short term means if you are deleting those data you are removing those data from the computer that is for the short term basis long term means if I want to keep all the data for the long term then I am keeping those data in some storage devices for keeping it for the longer period so we are keeping it in a secondary memory for a longer period okay okay now let's start the examples of primary memory up to here all of you understood what is primary memory and what is secondary memory okay now come to the example of primary memory that is RAM first example is RAM RAM stands for random access memory RAM stands for random access memory okay what is RAM RAM is a volatile memory RAM is a volatile memory what is volatile means it stores the data till the power switched on once the power goes off the whole data in RAM gets erased and it only stores data which has to be currently processed that is called volatile memory next is it is read and write memory of the computer okay that's why we say it is read write memory of the computer means the processor read instruction from the RAM and write the result to the RAM. That's how data can be modified in RAM. Third, the storage capacity of RAM is high, ranging from 64 MB to 16 GB. That's why the storage capacity of RAM is high. Next is, RAM is the fastest and costliest memory of the computer. Why? because of its speed that's why it is very expensive okay understood about RAM now come to the second example that is ROM ROM stands for read only memory okay RAM, ROM stands for read only memory 
So, what is ROM? Unlike RAM, the ROM memory can't be directly accessed by CPU. Got it? Okay. What is ROM? ROM is a non-volatile memory. It is a non-volatile memory means the data inside the ROM, the data inside the ROM retains there. Okay. Even if the power of the CPU switched off, means it will not erase the data. Second point in is it is read only memory it is read only memory means data in rom can only be read by cpu that's why it is called read only memory third the capacity of rom is comparatively smaller than ram fourth rom is slower and cheaper than ram understood so these are the points of ram and rom which is very important Next is what is volatile and what is non-volatile because this is very very important for you. Volatile means the data and information will be in the memory till the computer is on. As soon as the power supply goes off, all the data present in it gets erased. That's why it is called temporary memory. Example of volatile memory is RAM, random access memory, non-volatile memory, Non-volatile means data stored in it is not lost even when the power goes off. That's why it is called permanent memory. And the example of non-volatile memory is ROM, read-only memory. Understood? Got it? Very good. So this, this is the first part of chapter 2. Next, in next video, next part, I'll give you the examples of secondary memory. All the devices and along with this, along with its sizes, I'll give you. Okay, so that's all for today. Okay, I hope all of you has understood about uh, about RAM, ROM, memory, data and storage. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Bye bye.